morning, everyone. I'll just run through kind of the, the usual format where I'll just go over where we are at the moment in terms of our rainfall and our soil moisture. Then I'll look at the uh, climate modes, things like um, El Nino, and uh, then have a look at the forecast So in terms of rainfall, uh, we had a very dry July and then a very average August and then a very wet September so we, had, we covered everything and we've gone back to being quite dry again so um, in October on a region wide sort of basis we only had about half our usual October rainfall um, but the, kind of the then it was kind of um, bolstered by being sort of average up in the north of the region but quite dry, the ranges were quite dry and the plains were quite dry, so really for those areas really only about a third of the year than usual October rainfall. Soil moisture though, I think from still from September, um, his, his holding up in places, um, this is Bridge Park, just um, out the back of Hastings. Um, I'll just go over the graphs again just to remind you that the dotted line is the median for the time of year, you've got the top of year along the bottom there, and the um, this sort of greenish line is last year, and these, this sort of envelope is between the 90th and 10th percentile, so once you get in out of those areas then you're looking at the more extreme ends of um, uh, the soil moisture. Um, and the black line is how we're currently going, so this is that back line there. Um, so above median levels at Bridge Park, so in, sort of within the envelope, so that's, that's all good. Um, Onga Onga down in central Hawke's Bay, not so flash. It's um, below median levels and has just at the moment fallen out of that sort of that envelope. Crown Thorpe in the hill country to the west of Hastings, that's pretty much around median levels, so that's, that's not, not looking too bad. And then up north, Hongaroa, which is north of Wairua, that's above normal, um, as you saw in that rainfall map, up there we're, we're pretty okay for rain in October and they had a lot in September, so they're okay in Tahurua, which is right up the northwest of the region, that again is sort of above median levels. So it's but up and down across the region. Now looking at some of these climate modes, at the moment, um, the ENSO, our NINO is, is neutral, but I'll go into where that um, is going at the moment. Indian Ocean Dipole, that's another climate mode that can influence our spring weather. And it's to do with sea surface temperatures kind of in the Indian Ocean, and that affects storm tracks across New Zealand. And that's positive, which tends to make, does tend to give us a dry spring. And um, the interdecadal Pacific Oscillation, that's the 20, sort of 15 to 30 year cycle where you either get more El Ninos and more La Ninas, that's positive and that's um, associated with some more El Nino. And that has been for about um, since 2014. And sea surface temperatures also can influence us. Generally, sort of colder can bring us colder, drier weather. Um, warm, uh, warm waters can kind of bring us um, sort of wetter, warmer weather. Sort of had warm, this is the seasonal past season. Warmer waters out to the east, just around New Zealand, kind of normal. And that's kind of been the way it's been sort of past month, um, week and just sort of the last sort of daily one. And you'll see here quite warm waters across the, um, or warmer than usual waters across the um, equator there. And so that leads into where, oh no, sorry, first of all, I'll just talk about the southern modes. So that southern annual mode, that's um, one that changes quite frequently sort of week to week and either when it's positive we get um, more sort of anti-cyclones and when it's negative the um, westerly wind belt shifts up and we get sort of raging westerlies all the time. So here we are, this is kind of the observed and we've sort of ran about here we've got negative so this is kind of this more windier period that we've been having and then sort of um, the models do tend to 
look as though they might take it a bit more positive in the next little while, so maybe a bit more of a, a settled period. Now, the, so looking at um, Arduino, that's, what I say, it's negative now, it's, it's pretty looking odds on that it's de developed in the next month or two. Um, it's, I think, it's generally sort of um, taken on a three month average of certain indices and you're looking at it in that three month average of this indices of about 0.5 and at the moment, last, last count it was 0.4, so it's kind of on the, on the verge of uh, becoming sort of officially El Nino. It's neutral at the moment. It is neutral, but very much the whole, every, everything's starting to point to that it's, it's pretty near. Um, the ocean dipole, as I mentioned, is, is positive, and but that, that peters out <coughs> summer as it as it tends to do. Now the Niwa forecast um, for uh, November to January. So looking at temperatures um, either near or above normal, rainfall either below or, or near normal, and soil uh, soil moisture um, near or below. And this is just a look at some of the what's kind of the, some of the models that I look at are saying. So this is for its prediction for November January precipitation. You can see this orangey colour around over the North Island there, which tends to suggest low normal. So there's a, a number of models that I look at, and they either they're either normal or or below normal. It's not too much zone above, above normal at this stage. So that's kind of um, similar to what NIWA are saying in their forecast. And the sort of the general pattern is if you imagine these sort of red colours, anti cyclones, and the blue colours kind of low pressure. So it's kind of this, kind of a bit of a wedging between two highs kind of thing, is kind of the, the general pattern. For November, it tends to um, this is for the three month period. For November it does kind of have more of a sort of low kind of pressures around here which might help this kind of something. Um, but uh, for generally for November, December it's tending to show uh, a bit more of a westerly flow than we've had of late and then kind of more of a um, settled period perhaps in January, more like a uh, high kind of sitting over us but for um, January, but there's sort of many days really for that. So that, um, that's probably better, really. Morning, everyone. Mm -hmm. So, um, River flows. Um, these maps are based on our um, map, uh, state environment monitoring sites. We have a range across the region, uh, which we monitor on a monthly basis, um, annual, and we also do an uh, our five-year technical reports, which will be coming out next year. Um, October, we're currently, across all those sites, mostly below normal or close to normal. Um, as Kathleen said, with the rainfall, we had August where we were kind of in near normal, close to sort of average conditions. September, above normal due to higher rainfall, and then and the base of the are following suit would be Below or close to normal, so um, very closely linked to rainfall. We, um, I usually give a, a, just a snapshot of four sites sort of across our region. So we have um, the Hangaroa River up north, um, the S River, uh, the Inaruru River, and the Tukutuki River Bridge. Um, basically, we're just really the idea is to compare the current year with um, long term means, long term records, or particular years of interest. Um, I usually do one graph at a time, so this time I thought just to enable some comparison across the region. Um, if it's hard to, to see, I can actually, I've got the other larger graphs at the back of the presentation, but essentially um, for, these, for these four sites, we have um, the grade, darker grey area is basically the long term range between the min and the max. There's a light grey area in the middle, which is basically our normal range, which is plus or minus 25% from the long-term mean. And then our black dotted line is, is the long-term mean for each site. We have um, the 2012-13 year in the ready pink color, which is um, one of our driest years 
uh, recently on record, um, or when I booked in low flows anyway across the northern region. And then 2017, 18, which is last year, is in the light blue, and then our current year being in the black. So really, um, going through the four sites, you can see like for for September, because of that high rainfall, most of the sites were above um, in the above normal range. Um, moving into October. Um, most of these sites, all three apart from the ESC, essentially are in the below normal range. And the reason being is the, um, the S River is in the coastal range because I think we had some more localized rainfall yeah, events in that catchment. Yeah, which has basically kept those river, that river sort of um, propped up. Um, so, yeah. So we're below 2012 13. Yeah. Already. Um, yeah, for. Um, Just have to see how it tracks the rain for the next month and if, you know, if it receives at the same sort of rate. So, it's only in case I need to change into a forecast. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I spoke to Bruce last week and you were talking about uh, last month, we were talking about maybe trying to see what the river, latest river flows are doing, possibly. Um, it gets quite hard to sort of present all that information for all those sites, so I've just sort of brought up. Um, Point to our website, we've got for our telemetry flow sites all accessible through the web page. And um, if you go to, if you go to, um, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of maps that look at rainfall, river flow, low flows on the website. You can see all the sites that we have flows at. Um, you can get the latest flow by just clicking on the site, or you can actually go to the graph and actually see how the river flows are going. So for all those four sites at the moment, they're all receding. Um, they're not at critical low flow conditions. There, there are there are some which are, are, are tracking a bit lower, as we've seen from the from those um, monthly flows. But they, um, yeah, general general shape of the hydrographs is all is all dropping off, and that's basically just having no rain. So um, the other thing we have on our website um, is obstruction bands or for low flow monitoring. Um, if um, there's a link again to this one too, um, this gives you a snapshot of all, all the all the obstruction bands that are going on across the region. Um, on any of these sites, you can click on and, and then get the details with like, for some sites we've got more than one minimum flow, for example. So, um, I know you'll notice this is, this is a snapshot from yesterday. And all those sites which are on band, a lot of those are actually, have multiple levels. So, for, for like the Tuki Tuki, uh, that's Pirate Road, so they're, 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 there's quite a few levels of high levels which have come on band, but they haven't reached the low levels yet. So, if you go through this link, you can actually see the details and actually see which levels have been triggered. So far, um, so. Rob, is there also the traditional table method on the website? And the yes, you can. Yeah. So if you if you go to the yeah. site, um, it will bring up the traditional table, yeah. and then you can actually expand it to see all the sites at the same time as well. Okay. And then, based on NIWA's climate outlook for um, for November to January. Um, Similar with the rainfall, um, as you'd expect, that the flows are sort of predicted to be or stay in the below normal or normal range, and they're less likely to be in the above normal range. That's about it. Any questions? So, why do you think um, it plummeted so much in a month? Because we've gone from way above average to way below average in one month. I can't, uh, I can't think of any good reason. Other than, I mean, lack of rainfall would, would obviously be part of it, but um, possibly due to the winds with the evaporation of soil moisture. Are they, are they not showing a lot of huge deficits in water sites? So, so is it um, with the groundwater levels? I don't know if it's the same, but there's a big recession limb happening. So when we measured our groundwater levels, there's some big flood events occurring, which really bumped our groundwater levels and they came down. I'm just wondering. You know, you might have had some really big flows over September, which raised that average up, and now because you don't have those flashy flows, it's looking like it's much lower because it's a big recession that's going yeah. on. So more the contrast is the contrast between yeah. the two months is sort of exaggerated. Yeah. It'd be more than it probably would have been. But we're still below meet mm. for those two rivers. Yeah. I, I guess Bruce, there's a question back to to your area. Are you aware that irrigation is going on? At the moment, it's only just started, yeah. really, and that, that's why I'm, 
a wee bit perplexed that it hasn't been going with great gusto. You know, um, this month and next month are going to be the busy ones, um, and that's yet to, to drop so so quickly. Is um, probably only the last couple of weeks. It's really yeah yeah. I've, I've noticed it looking out the window. Yeah, the rivers just disappeared. Yeah, I can't see why because you sort of look upstream and downstream. There's not a lot of irrigation happening. And, uh, mm. I wonder if headwater inflows are perhaps a bit lower than normal. Uh, certainly, yeah, yeah, because it would have been because um, uh, mine showed that really like the ranges only had about a third of their October rainfall, and on the other side of the ranges, it was kind of the pattern where they would have. So is that the Rohanis or the Kawikas or both? Both. Yeah. And, and the rainfall that's been had in September were, weren't late September, were they? they were oh, yeah, yeah, it's been September a long time. September's so actually, it was early September yeah. that we had any decent rain, really. So it's been about, yeah, we had 50 days of, and only, yeah, in 50 days we only had about nine days of um, single figure mm. uh, uh, rainfall. So it's been quite a while since we had a decent yeah. rain. Part of the reason I didn't show the hydrographs today is because the range that I was going to show the last couple of months, for example, to give you an idea of where it's been, where it's where we're tracking, is that the, because of those rainfall events, you've just got this huge spike at one end and then a massive recession. So it doesn't really, it's not particularly interesting, but it does show you there's a, it, there's a lot of change that's gone on from that earlier part of September with those events yeah. tracking through to now. So. Catherine, do you think with your increased westerly flow we're going to get more rain on the ranges? It can do, and yeah, yeah. Um, the sort of the pattern that it's showing um, doesn't, it kind of gives a feeling it might be more drips and drabs as right. opposed to, you know, real sort of troughs coming over yeah, and yeah. then giving more rain to the ranges kind of thing. But um, Just the hopefully they will, yeah, get. Get a bit more than they have been lately. It's probably a more conducive than perhaps it's been more recently. But you don't see anything in the next six weeks, do you? Uh, well, there's the old system coming through quite whether you know it'll bring heavy stuff or not. Um, it's hard to tell. There'd be, there'd be bits, there'd be bits, it's just not looking like we're in a kind of a say a, a big blocking pack. Picking, uh, blocking pattern at the moment where you just kind of sit under a high for ages kind of thing. There's kind of bits of systems coming through, so there should be bits and pieces. Uh, at this stage it's hard to tell. Well, I mean, yeah, as it as sort of showed, the models are tending towards either normal or below normal. Sorry I was late, but um, was last, last month you talked about a possibility of low pressure systems tracking through at a latitude sort of around about uh, Bay of Plenty and, and we did get one sort of mid late last month which didn't spill much into Hawke's mm. Bay. Is that going to continue? For this month there's still a um, sort of the general pattern is a high by Australia and one out to the east of us and we kind of have got a no man's land in between kind of thing. For November, and pressure's lower to the south. And for November, there is kind of a hint of lower pressures kind of slightly to the north and to the east of us kind of thing, which hopefully might be an indication that we'll get so something sure. reasonable. Yeah. Um, but the sort of the general wind flow for November, there's a bit more westerly in the, in the wind flow for November, December, and then a bit more sort of a settled pattern in January and maybe a bit more northeasterly in, in January at this stage. So, yeah, so possibly with that sort of indication of lower pressure, pressures near us, hopefully there might be something, but in general this would be the flow that's looking a bit more westerly than it has. So yep, I'll give my talk on ground water levels just like before, um, as in other months. So I we we have monitored rise all across the region, as you know. I mainly focus on the Hero Time and Rural Tanner for these talk for these talks because that's where our major groundwater resources are. Um, our measurements were taken in mid-October, uh, so they don't always reflect the, all, the whole of, of October, they reflect the time that it was measured, and groundwater levels can be a bit more lagged 
than say the surface water rainfall event. So you'll see in my slides that things don't look so bad for October because of the reflecting conditions probably occurred in September. So uh, this is the the the, um, the groundwater level conditions for Heratonga for both September, so you can see what it was like last month, and October. Um, each of the dots represent a monitor well where we measure groundwater levels. In the centre is the age of the record, so how many years we've been monitoring those groundwater levels. And the colours represent their groundwater conditions, so I've tried to make it quite simple with green being safe and red being a bit low, blue being very high, etc. It's pretty self-explanatory on the legend there. Um, what you can see here is there hasn't really been a great deal of change between September and October. Um, at this time of year, groundwater levels are about at their highest, sort of around about September, they, they reach their peak and then they start to recede into summer. Um, and that's sort of stayed the way through October, that was because of that big rainfall event in September, there was a big um, flood and recharge wave that propagated through the recharge system and kept groundwater levels relatively high, and I've got a slide there to show you that. Um, yeah, so things for, for October, for here at time not too bad, what we usually start to see is some um, below normal levels happening in this recharge area and everything else is usually quite normal but it's a bit of a mixed pattern but overall mainly normal I think. Um, so this is that flood propagation wave I've talked about. I've removed the axes on purpose, thus a little irrelevant for the point that I want to show. So the orange line here is the stage at the Nardano River. You can see this big flood event coming up as the stage goes really high and then Corresponding with that is groundwater levels, and they go up as well. And this is what happened for us in September. Uh, our groundwater levels shot up along with the, uh, with the river levels. This is uh, Bridge Park as well, and this is in substation Leary Road. Um, and these points represent when we took our groundwater levels. Um, so you can see in September we took it at uh, substation just before the rise it went up and then we measured it again in October uh, just on the, the receding limb here but it was higher but at this point in Bridge Park we took it right at the top of the recession it was a couple of days later and then it was lower so you can see the difference here so what I'm trying to plot here is the difference in water levels between September and October what it's showing is that for a lot of it particularly through this recharge event groundwater levels went up over that period whereas to the east, they went down. And that's because that flood propagation event that I was talking about tends to propagate over here. So you, it first comes through the recharge area, groundwater levels go up and it becomes more dampened as we go towards the east. And you pretty much don't see it in those wells over there. And so these are responding more to that regional groundwater level decline that you get seasonally and are on their way down anyway. So you're not getting that rise here. These anomalies is just the fact that this measurement happened to be taken at the top of the recession curve, so it's much higher when you compare it to October, whereas the rest are right at the bottom, and so you can see it's higher there. So can you explain where the declining layer is and what's impact that has? Yep, so uh, this is the, just generally, so a bit of an unconfining layer in this direction, where when we say unconfining, it's mainly just gravels where you don't have a lot of clays on top that retard that movement of, say, rainfall recharge through the system. And because they're quite open framework gravels, that recharge rainfall rivers can flow through more easily and you get that, that greater response from those external those patterns. Whereas the confined area, obviously you've got this protective layer, it's almost like a waterproof clay layer that stops all that rainfall recharge coming in. So it's got a much larger distance for that recharge to travel through the system and impact on the groundwater systems it also pressurises the system, so it becomes confined, those water levels want to go up, it's like a seal, and those groundwater levels become artesian. So in these areas here, the water levels are above land surface, so for example at the coast at 222, groundwater levels are about 8 metres, uh, maybe about 7.5 through here, whereas over in this area they're about, say, negative 5 metres, negative 4 metres, so a different pressure response going on there. Uh, and the box, the whisker plot there, was just to try and give you a feel for the range of the difference between the September and groundwater level measurements. So most of them around, the difference is around about I don't know, 30 centimetres. And these two, min and max, with those anomalies here at Talbot's on the Power Tour and Bridge Park, but most of them only about 30 centimetre difference in water levels between September and October.
Um, what I like to usually show too is just a couple of hydrographs because sometimes it's quite, they're quite representative of the system. The Hirotonga tends to respond quite similar in terms of pattern. Um, so these give you an idea of what's happening in the unconfined and the confined system, and just another way to look at it. The top graph is located in Flaxmere. The bottom graph is located in Awatoto, which is in the confined area. So confined area, unconfined, unconfined area. Like Rob's graphs, I've got um, a few different lines there. One representing the black line representing current year now, red representing the 2012-2013 year, which was quite low for us, and the green line representing last year, just as a comparison. So you can see in the unconfined area, that for October, you know, groundwater levels were sitting in that light grey band, which is what we call our normal range, not too bad, and above the 2013 year and above last year. That probably reflects again that, that wave that came through, it was quite high when it was measured. Um, for the unconfined, sorry, for the confined area, the Awatoto, it's sitting around about a similar level to last year, still above the 2012-2013 year, but yeah, it's not showing at the moment, but we'll be starting to track downwards now into summer. Last measurement was the 9th, but they were measured on the 8th and 9th groundwater levels in Hirotonga. Again, a couple of plots from our telemetry well. So some of our sites we have recorders on, we measure groundwater levels every 15 minutes, and they're telemetered back to, to council. These are quite good to, to, to observe very short-term changes that are happening, whereas our monthly dips are good for long-term changes. So these can pick up those flood propagation events or even little interference effects from people pumping, etc. And again, with a substation flex there, you can see those two recharge events coming through. One's in June, which is the first one pointing out, and the next one's in September as those waves come through. You can see it's another mini ones. Obviously this one I was closer to the river and a bit more responsive, and you can see that those peaks. So where is substation? So substations Mary Road in the in the unconfined area, near near Holsoms, in the Gimlet gravel area. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out was that, you know, last summer things didn't get as low as they had in previous years, which was really nice because they had been quite low for others years. So gravel levels had started off quite high for us, which was kind of nice. So spikes are just anomalies in there. So this is the raw tanifer. Just give you a second look at it. Pretty much no real change from September. It's showing essentially at that stage when it was measured, everything was about normal. I sort of thought it was going to be like that with the rainfall that we had in September. If I had to take a guess, I think you'll find that we'll see a lot more below normal come uh, November. Which we'll not say September. Um, so everything looked good there. There's a red dot there. I know that well. That well's uh, at a dairy farm. It, it, probably a pumping effect there it has a lot of pumping on that bore so that red dot's a bit of an anomaly it's probably affecting a, pump, a, reflecting a pumping condition than, than the static water levels but you know just looking at it, general pattern is for October pretty normal uh, these hydrographs you can see where they track again it's pretty much sitting in this normal light grey band separate by 220 which slightly drops into the below normal on that map there was only one, there only a couple of little yellows, so it was just it's just a little bit into the below normal, so nothing too much concerned about. But the interesting thing here is that uh, you know our our groundwater levels are quite a bit below the 2012-2013 water level. It doesn't really mean much. Things change so fast in groundwater levels. You know you can't really predict just because we're below it now that things are going to be dire come summer. You can get rainfall events, river events that really change things. So. It just happens to be that for this time of year right now we're a bit lower. And yeah, a couple of uh, telemetry, pl telemetry plots again. Um, I like this one here because it shows, uh, I've said before, one of the guys pumping. This is a real classic response to a drawdown here that you get. It's my way, because I don't know when people are pumping, but it's my way to try and indicate when the irrigation start has started for the season. This is a tag about, so it's not going to be reflective of everywhere. Uh, but I think last month when I put it up, uh, they hadn't wiped in on their pumps and we were right at the peak of the um, recovery curve. That's what we'd call it if there was a pumping response or a recovery response at the top there. But now it's starting to drop down. So that indicates to me that you know things have started to turn on uh, 
and we're up to November now, so that's not too surprising. Um, but you can also see that you know ground levels are maybe a bit higher than in other years at the moment. I didn't do a different, I have a difference map, but I decided to remove it because it wasn't as interesting as the Kira Tonga. It doesn't have that big flood propagation wave that goes through um, the Royal Tanapa, so I decided to remove it. Um, so the, the messages I wanted to put across uh, is that normal, pretty much normal for October. Our ground wall levels were measured mid-October, so they don't reflect all the conditions in October. We tend to be a bit more lagged behind rainfall rivers, obviously it takes a bit more time for our system to respond to these climate events. Um, we have now started our seasonal decline, which is normal, so we'll see ground wall levels start to decline uh, through to about February or March, sometimes into April. Um, we don't know how low they're going to get. get. We've seen from 2012-13 that you know, little events can change things, so you can't really predict how low things are going to go. Um, recharge in September, particularly for the Herotonga anyway, kept ground levels quite high in October because we were still in that recession limb that was going on. Um, and as I said before, ground levels can change really quickly. That is me.